Hey guys, today I'm testing out the LumaFusion app for iPad. LumaFusion is definitely one of the most loved editing apps in the App Store. So today I'm gonna give you a quick demo and then I'm gonna give you my final thoughts and let you know if I think this app is worth picking up. Right now the price on it is $29.99 and I'm going to be using my new iPad Pro. This thing is sick, you guys. It's 12.9 inches and I've got it paired with the Magic Keyboard and an Apple Pencil. I love this setup. If you are in the market for a new tablet, I highly recommend this iPad with the Magic Keyboard and the Pencil. If you are in the creative arts like I am, I will link to all of this down below, but for now, let's just get into LumaFusion. So here is what LumaFusion looks like when you first open it. Now I have played with this a little bit and my first impression is that LumaFusion is so similar to Final Cut Pro. I mean like exactly like Final Cut Pro. So if you're a Final Cut user and you're looking for an app for your iPad, I think LumaFusion will be a great fit for you. If you're not familiar with Final Cut, it is Apple's pro editing app that is only for desktop at this time. I do believe that they are coming out with a Final Cut app at some point in the future, but for now we've got LumaFusion. Okay, let's start building. All right, so I am going to press here to create a new project and I can customize the project settings. I've got all these frame rates. This is very professional. I've got a lot of different aspect ratios. You can obviously do vertical. You can do 360 degree video on here. I mean, you can do a lot. Also the color space has a lot of professional color spaces as well. I'm gonna leave everything on based on first video clip added. So my timeline is gonna take the properties of the first clip that I add because all of my B-roll shots are gonna be from my iPhone. So I'm gonna head on up to this top button here and access my photos. And these are the clips that we're going to be working with. It is a street festival that I shot with my iPhone and airdropped to this iPad. So they were right there on the iPad. So if I select a clip, it's going to appear here in my playback window. And in this window, I can trim by just grabbing these yellow handles and picking my in and out points. I can also play it back and use the I and O shortcuts on the Magic Keyboard if I wanted. I think having the Magic Keyboard with the LumaFusion app is definitely a huge advantage as opposed to just trying to do everything with your finger or the Apple Pencil. Sometimes I use my fingers, sometimes I really love this keyboard. All right, so to drop this first clip into the timeline, I can do it in a couple different ways. I can double click the clip in my library and it drops it there with those in and out points right there on my timeline. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that and show you that I can also long hold that clip and drop it into my timeline as well. And then the other thing is that I can just hit the W shortcut to drop it in there as well. What did I tell you? The shortcuts on LumaFusion are so similar to Final Cut, super convenient. All right, before I get too far, I'm going to add some music to this project because I don't have any voiceover for this and I love editing to music. So if I hit the import button at the top of my library, I can select story blocks. LumaFusion has some sort of agreement with story blocks that you can access some free content from story blocks. Or if you subscribe to story blocks, you can link your accounts so you get access to everything on story blocks here. So you can see that some of these music tracks are labeled as free. And then if we scroll down, they are not free. I can select that clip and hit the space bar to play it and preview it. And then if I decide I like it, I can click down in my timeline and use the arrow keys to jump to the beginning and end of that clip. And I'm going to hit the Q key to connect that clip under my main storyline, just like in Final Cut. Now in LumaFusion, you can have up to six tracks of video and titles, and you can have six audio tracks as well. So you can do a lot with this app. It's not like, you know, a little cheesy iPhone editing app that you're just doing on the fly. This feels a lot more professional. All right, I'm gonna go in and drop a few more shots here onto my timeline. While I'm dropping in these shots, you guys, if you like this video, if you wanna see more about LumaFusion, let me know, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, let's say these are all the shots that I wanted on my timeline, but you can see here that my music is way too long. So if I wanted to split my music clip, I would just select the music and I would use the scissors here to create a cut. And now you can see that my music is two separate clips and I'm gonna trim that music and then head down to the end of my timeline. 
And you can see if I'm moving my clips around, I just long press on them and drag. And you can reorder your clips in the exact same way by just long pressing, clicking, dragging, and dropping it into its new position. Now, what if I wanted to change the framing of some of these clips? For instance, what if I wanted to be much tighter on this guy's hand? Let me zoom into the timeline. I'm going to double click that clip here and it opens up this new window. We can do a lot here in this window. So the first thing I'm going to do is click this bottom left icon. And now you can see this is where all like my framing and cropping is. There's some options here where I can make this, let's say a split screen if I wanted two clips. Uh, laid in here. I'm going to go back to reset all and I'm going to manually change the size and position using these sliders here. So first let me scale it up and then I'm going to reposition this clip. So we're really close up on his hand. I could also zoom into his hand here using keyframing. This is something I don't see in a lot of video editing apps and you know I've reviewed a lot of them on this channel. So let me show you how this works. I can, let's say, zoom out of my clip here and I'm going to hit this key here on the bottom left to add what's called a keyframe. And then I'm going to move down in my timeline to the end of my clip and I'm going to use my fingers to scale up and reposition this clip. And so now over the course of the clip, I've created a zoom in. Now there are some pre-created move effects here in this menu, but you can also create your own with keyframing. And then once I'm satisfied, I can just go back to my main timeline. There's also color correction we can do in LumaFusion. So to get to that, again, let's select our clip in our timeline. I'm going to double click it to open that same window. This time we're going to navigate over to this menu here in the bottom right. This is colors and effects. And there's a lot of presets here that we can apply and then adjust to our clips or we can just do custom by selecting the top one here, original, and then I can play with all of these different menu options. And I've got these scopes here, which I really love. I do feel like having scopes makes this super professional. So you know that your color corrections are within range. Up here in the top right of the screen, you have some other features. The next option here is to apply LUTs. If you don't know what LUTs are, don't worry about it. But if you do know, you know that if you shot something in log and you wanted to do a LUT correction, you could do that here as well as bring in your own LUTs. This next option over has some very specific stylized looks. I don't know that I would be reaching for these so often. And now every time I click on one, you'll notice that it populates down here in this window. If I wanna get rid of those, you just hit the trash can to get rid of them. These other options here are blur, and then you have on-screen controls as well. Let me get rid of that. But the one that I actually thought was pretty good are the sharpening tools. I do think the sharpening tools here in LumaFusion are pretty spot on. So that's definitely a highlight in this app. Let me get rid of that because we actually don't need it. These distortion tools are pretty wild, um, but they're a little bit of fun if you can figure out a way to make them work and to use them. There's also a keying feature here under this next icon, which we're not working with green screen video, so we can't really demo that. And then this last one of these stars are that you can actually save and export your own effects here in LumaFusion, which is really cool. So you can custom create a move with those keyframes, and then you could apply filters and color corrections to it, and then save that whole bundle as an effect that you could share with someone else or reuse in the future, which is also very cool. Now let's add some titles to this. So we're gonna head back over in our library and select the titles option. And here are all of these titles. Let me tell you what I was a little bit surprised to see when I opened up these titles. You can't play them back at all in the viewer. They're just static titles, which is kind of disappointing. Um, and the designs are okay, I'll say that. But let's add a title and modify it just so I can show you. So I'm gonna drop this title on top of my main timeline and I can trim it up right here in my timeline and reposition it. I'm going to double click it to access it. Then if I wanna actually modify what the text says, I just double click it and I can change all these colors if I so choose, reposition things. And there's a lot of font options as well. All right, let's go back to our main timeline and let's add some transitions to finish this up. So back in the library, let's select transitions. Now, in order to add a transition, your playhead needs to be placed right between two clips. For me, I think it makes the most sense to use the keyboard. 
to position that playhead using these arrow keys. And then let's just pick one of these transitions. I mean, these transitions are not too exciting. And some of them look like they're straight out of Final Cut. Like, wow, what a knockoff. It's wild. Oh, that is so cheesy, this transition. But I don't really see much else in there that's that exciting. So what do I think about Luma Fusion? Let's start with the positives. First of all, it feels really professional. There's a lot of stuff in here. You can do six tracks of video, six tracks of audio. There's keyframing, there's video scopes, there's the Chroma King that we didn't even talk about. There's even like audio meters in here, which you don't see in a lot of video editing apps that I've reviewed on this channel. You can apply multiple filters and effects to a single clip. You can import LUTs if you want to. And there's integrations with other products like Storyblocks and Frame.io and even more. And as a Final Cut user, it feels so intuitive, especially the keyboard shortcuts. I feel like it took me no time to pick up on how to use LumaFusion. And then when you combine it with this sick iPad and the Magic Keyboard, it is a really powerful tool that you feel like you can actually get stuff done with. Let's talk about some of the negatives. First of all, the titles I felt like were really lacking and you could keyframe movement on the titles and apply those very basic moves to the titles, but I just felt like there could be so much more fun with the titles here in LumaFusion, as well as the transitions. The transitions feel so incredibly dated, like so incredibly dated. I think there's a lot of room for improvement there as well. I also felt like the color correction was really lacking. There wasn't enough control with color correction. Like I couldn't adjust, let's say the brightness and darkness on just the shadows or just the highlights or just the midtones. It was kind of like all or nothing. The other thing I wasn't crazy about is that with all of these filters in here, there's no search filter that I could find. So you really just have to scroll a lot to find the exact effect that you're looking for. And the last thing, if I'm going to be really picky, is this. When I'm scrubbing through clips here in the viewer, it does give me some data here about like, let's say how long the duration of my in to out points are. But the way that they're shown here on the screen makes it so hard to read with some clips. I can barely read that. I just think they could make this stand out a little bit more easily with let's say a gray box around it, but that's pretty nitpicky. So would I recommend LumaFusion? Hands down for $30, I would totally recommend LumaFusion if you're serious about editing videos. There's a lot of stuff in here and it feels pretty professional considering I'm editing on an iPad. So I definitely think LumaFusion is worth getting if you really like editing and you wanna be really mobile. Is it perfect? No, I think that there could be improvements on the titles and transitions, on the color correction. Some of the UI I think could be a little bit improved in terms of navigating and searching, but all in all, this is a great video editing app and any minute now, LumaFusion is going to be dropping version four, which includes multicam editing. If you wanna see me do a review on LumaFusion version four, let me know in the comments. If you want more in-depth tutorials about LumaFusion, let me know that in the comments as well. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos for you and I will see you again.